Hello students, in this video we'll consider the associated Legendre equation. Let's recall that 1 minus x squared y double prime minus 2xy prime plus l times l plus 1 y equals 0 is Legendre's equation and has solutions, has polynomial solutions pl of x, and that's the Elf Legendre polynomial, okay? And so now the question for us is what equation do the derivatives of the Legendre polynomial satisfy? So if we take this equation over here, let's call this equation over here star, and what I like to do is I like to find the derivative of equation star. So let's do the derivative with respect to x of equation star, okay? That will give me a 1 minus x squared y double prime, triple prime if I do the derivative of the first term, a minus 2xy double prime, then if I do the derivative of this term over here, I'll have a negative 2xy double prime, and then a minus 2y prime. And I'm going to group those with those terms over there. So plus L, L plus 1, and then that minus 2, and then a y prime like that equals 0. So in other words, PL prime satisfies this equation over here. So PL prime, hence PL prime satisfies, satisfies this equation over here, satisfies 1 minus x squared, I'll call it a z actually. So let's call that a z, not to avoid confusion. Now I get what? Now I get 4x z prime over there, minus 4x z prime. Let's call this thing, this is going to be our z, right? 4x z prime, and then plus l, l plus 1, minus 2 z is equal to zero. Okay, so in other words, this is not the Legendre equation anymore. This is the derivative of the Legendre equation, which is satisfied by the derivative of the Legendre polynomial. Okay, notice that this L plus one, L times L plus one is subtracted from two, and this is a now a negative four x. Now that's this, these first two terms are not self-adjoint. They're not in sort of a self-adjoint form, so I'm gonna need to figure out how to address that issue over there. All right, let's do one more example to sort of see the general structure of this. And so now what will happen if I differentiate this again? So now differentiate this equation, now, compute d by dx squared squared of star. So I'm going to do the derivative of this equation over here, and we're going to get the same sort of basic form, right? So what we get over here, we're going to get a 1 minus x squared z triple prime, and then a minus 2x z double prime, then a minus 4x z double prime, then a minus 4z prime. So I'm going to put that with over here. So I'm going to have a minus 4, and that's going to be a minus 6 over here. So that's going to be a plus l l plus 1, and then minus 6, z prime is equal to 0. So what we're going to have over here is we're going to have what? And so now we're going to have a, that's the second derivative over here, so now this is going to give us a what? This is going to give us a 1 minus x squared, z double prime, let's call that ww prime, ww prime, and then minus what? Minus 6, minus 6, x, w prime, and then a plus, L, L plus 1, and then a minus 6, W is equal to 0. And this equation over here is the equation that what? This is satisfied by PL double prime solves this. And so now let's think about what's going to happen in the next step. In the next step, what's going to happen? I'm going to get a negative 8 over here because the x squared is going to hit the, a, a join with that 6x. So I'm getting an 8 over there. And then I'll have a 6 and a 6, which is a 12, right? So I'm going to have an 8 and a 12. So in general, if we follow this, we're going to see by induction, so by induction, the mth derivative of PL. If I do m derivatives of PL, where of course m is less than L here, less than or equal to L, satisfies this equation, satisfies the equation, satisfies 1 minus x squared. Let's call this new variable over here. I'm going to call it v. So let's say v double prime minus 2m plus 1 x v prime, and then plus L and then L plus 1 and then minus M and then M plus 1 from that term over there 
applied to V is equal to zero. And to save myself a little bit of writing, what I'm gonna do in this next step over here is I'm gonna call this whole factor over here, we're gonna call this to save myself writing lambda, okay? So this lambda is really a function of L and M, but I'm just gonna write that as lambda. That's gonna be the only time we're gonna use lambda in this problem. And so now what I wanna do is I wanna let, I want to say, well, now this problem is not in self-adjoint form, so what we can always do, we know when we have a second order linear differential equation, which is not in self-adjoint form, I can use an integrating factor to put it in self-adjoint form. So it's a good exercise for yourself. You can check what you're gonna need to do. We're gonna write V as F times W like this, okay? And now, of course, what's V prime gonna be? This implies that V prime is going to be F prime W plus W prime F, and that's going to imply that VW prime, the second derivative of V double prime, is gonna be F double prime W plus two F prime W prime plus W W prime F, right? And so if I substitute these values in, I can substitute this in for V, this in for V prime, and this in for V double prime into our associate, this equation over here. Let's call this equation over here hashtag, right, that's the hashtag equation. And we're gonna plug this into hashtag, and the choice of f we're going to choose, when we see we're gonna do this, if we choose f, this works. This will work for any value of f, but if we choose f of x to be one minus x squared, negative m over two, then what will this ensure? This will ensure that these two terms will be in self-adjoint form, right? So with this choice of f, our equation is going to become what? Well, let's think about what f prime is gonna be. So F prime B, F prime is going to be, it's going to be this thing with one less power of X and then a negative two X and M over two with a negative sign. So that's going to be an M X over one minus X squared F. What's F double prime going to be? Well, it's going to be this thing squared times F. So it's going to be M X over one minus X squared quantity squared F and then plus what? The derivative of this thing is going to be M plus X squared. So plus M one plus X squared F over one minus x squared, squared, like that, okay? Because it's the bottom times the derivative of the top, right? So it's gonna be a one, an m and a negative x squared, then the top times, the minus top times the bottom, which is gonna be an m, x, then net two x, so it's gonna be a plus x squared over there, and of course times f. Great. Now notice that both f, f prime, and f double prime all can be expressed as a, as a function of f. Great. And so now what's gonna happen when we plug this in over here? So now notice that since all of these things have, have F double prime, F prime, and F, F prime, F prime, and F, all have all our functions of F, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this hashtag equation scaled by one over F. So let's look at hashtag scaled by one over F. So hashtag times one over F is gonna give us what? Well, let's look at this first term over here, this one minus X squared, one minus X squared, and then V double prime, V double prime, and then I'm gonna put that over F, right? One over F. What's that gonna give us? That's gonna give us a whole bunch of terms, right? So what terms are those gonna give us? Well, we're going to have this F double prime W, so we're gonna have a W term times F double prime. I'm gonna get rid of the F since I'm dividing by F, so I'm gonna have a M X over one minus X squared squared. And now I have this one over x squared over here, so that's gonna eliminate one of the factors of x squared in the denominator, so let's get rid of that right away. So notice that this one minus x squared is gonna hit this one minus x squared squared, and so I'm gonna have an m squared x squared over one minus x squared. That's my first term over here, the f goes away. And then what will we have? The next we're going to have a m plus m and then one plus x squared over one minus x squared. One of them in the number is gonna go away. And these are all the w terms we're gonna have over here. Great. Now what are the w prime terms? So now I have plus two f prime w prime. So they're gonna have a two and then a w prime over here. So what will w prime give us? So two f prime is gonna be this thing over here. So we'll have a two and then I, this is gonna go away over here. This one minus x squared is gonna go away. I'm just gonna have a two m, x, and then a w prime. So let's make sure that works. I have a two, I have a w prime, and then the f prime is gonna be m, x, f, the x is gonna cancel, and this denominator will cancel, so you're getting exactly this term. And then finally, we have w, w prime terms. So the w, w prime terms are gonna be what? I'm just gonna divide by x, and I'm just gonna have a one minus x squared, one minus x squared, w, w prime. Perfect. Let's look at the next term in the equation. The next term in the equation is gonna be a negative two x, and then an m plus one, m plus one, and then a V 
prime and then a one over f. So all those terms over there in the Legendre equation, associated Legendre differential equation give us. We'll now have to multiply by f prime terms over here. So this is the f prime term. So let's look at these carefully. So we're going to have w terms. What will the w terms give me? It's going to be a negative 2xm plus 1. That's what's out in front. And then that's going to be times f prime over here. So that f prime is going to be this thing over here. So it's just going to be a mx, mx, and then this is going to be divided by 1 minus x squared over there. That's the f prime term. So these are w terms. And then what are the w prime terms going to be? The w prime terms over here are going to be negative 2xm plus 1, and then um, v prime, and so that's going to give me a w prime times f, but the f goes away, so that's going to be a w prime. Great. So now I have all my terms. I have this term, and I have two terms. I have a w term, I have a w prime term. That's great. And then that's all that we get. Excellent. And then finally, the last term is going to be lambda v and then 1 over f, and that's just going to be what? That's just going to be the L, L plus 1, minus M, M plus 1, and then this is times um, just W over here. Okay, excellent. And so now let's look at the terms we have over here in this equation over here. So let's gather the terms. The terms we're going to get, let's look at the WW prime term. The only WW w prime term is this term over here, so we're going to have, this is going to be a 1 minus... 1 minus x squared w double prime. That's great. That's the only w double prime term I see over here. Let's look at the w prime terms over here. I have a positive mx w prime and a negative 2x m w prime. The mx terms are going to cancel with this over here, and I get a negative 2x w prime. And lo and behold, that's exactly what I said was going to happen. If we choose this value of x in general, we know we can put something into self-adjoint form by this substitution over here. And so I'm just following that algorithm that we've already previously discussed for self-adjoint operators, okay, for sturm liouville systems. Great. And now the only question is what is the factor of w over here? Well, we're clearly going to have this l, l plus 1 w. There's nothing else that's going to cancel out over here. But now, let's do a little side calculation over here. Let's look at all the terms that have W. So let's ca calculate all the terms that have W. And what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to artificially put a, I'm going to take this and multiply this M times M plus 1 by a 1 minus X squared on top and a 1 minus X squared on the bottom, right? To make sure that, because everything else has a 1 over X squared term over here. So the W coefficient is going to be what? The W coefficient plus W L L plus 1. That's always going to stick around. And now let's see what's going to happen over here. We're going to have an m squared x squared. So this is the w coefficient. Let's look at it. We're going to have an m squared x squared. We're going to have a plus m. We're going to have a plus m x squared. That's from these terms over here, right? Then let's go to these terms over here. We're going to have a negative m squared x squared with a 2. So that's a negative 2m squared x squared from these terms over here. And we'll have a negative 2xm x squared. So that's a negative 2m x squared from those terms over there. Good. And then finally, what we have over here, we're going to have a negative m squared, right? We'll have a negative m, so we're going to have a negative m squared, negative m squared, a negative m, and then we're going to have a positive m squared x, positive m squared x squared, and then finally a what? And then a positive m x squared, positive m x squared. So let's look at all these terms, and all these things, of course, are divided by 1 plus x squared. So this is going to be a minus something over 1 minus x squared. What will it be? Let's think. Well, we have an m squared x squared, an m squared x squared, and a negative 2m squared x squared. Those are going to cancel out. An m x squared, an m x squared, and a negative 2. Oh, that, those are the x squared terms. Those will cancel with those terms. And then a positive m and a negative m, and we're just left with a negative m squared. So this is negative m squared, and that's equal to 0. So in other words, we've just shown that the function, this is called the associated Legendre equation, associated Legendre equation associated Legendre equation. And this associated Legendre equation has solution. The solution to this equation is going to be what? It's going to be this function over here. Well, it's going to be, we know that V satisfies this, so we're looking for the W satisfies this equation over here. So if I multiply by 1 minus x squared m over 2, the solution is going to be 1 minus x squared m over 2. Then I do m derivatives d by dx, m derivatives, that's a 2, m of pl 
of x. And these things over here, the notation for these things, we're going to write these things, these functions over here are p l m of x, and these p l m of x are called the associated Legendre functions, because they're no longer polynomials, because I'm hanging them with this 1 minus x squared to the power m over 2, and then m derivatives of the l Legendre polynomial. And again, it's important to remember that this l, this m parameter over here, is always less than or equal to l, right? And so these associated Legendre polynomials are going to arise when we study the spherical harmonic equation, because what happens when we separate variables in the Laplace equation in spherical coordinates is that we have, a, we will exactly get this equation over here for the angular components for the longitude and the latitudinal angular variables and spherical coordinates. Thank you very much.